Today, we're going to be taking a look at a vehicle that has been the backbone of misery on Britain's roads for the past 40 years. It is, of course, a Land Rover Defender. guy in his mid-60s who expressed interest in buying one of these and I was quick to inform him that if a man of his age started driving one of these he'd be paralysed by the age of 70. The sad thing is he can't even fit a wheelchair in the back. The level of discomfort offered here is definitely suited to a young man. When you get up to speed in this Defender, things start to become really quite alarming. It feels like I'm in the cockpit of a 747, both engines have sheared off and I've lost all hydraulics. It's completely uncontrollable. The sound is deafening and everything's shaking itself to bits. Look at the state of it. I feel like I should call my family and tell them I'm never coming home again. Looking around the bodywork, you can see where the blue paint started to chip off to reveal the original green paint underneath. So it's probably a ringer. It has this completely useless ladder on the back. The only purpose I can think of is to get up on the roof and see where it's leaking from. That is, if it doesn't snap off, we kill someone in the car behind first. One of the only good things about this Land Rover is the fact it has a galvanized chassis. As you can see, it's just started to uh, oxidize and the paint's coming off, but it should last forever. You'll notice that in the front, there is space for three people. But it's not actually possible to slam it into fourth gear without severely injuring the middle passenger's private area. And here we have the most important tool in a Defender owner's arsenal, the hazard light switch. You're gonna get used to seeing that. You'll see lots of little holes and gaps everywhere. This is obviously an early attempt by Land Rover to create a air conditioning system which you can't actually switch off. In the back we've got this genuine Land Rover floor mat and a spare number plate to put on your trailer but you're a brave man if you want to tow anything with this. Now there is a reason why there's nothing in the back that's because you can't actually fit anything in it. When your spare wheel carrier rots off, which it will you're going to have to put it in the back. And when you do that, there's no room left for anything else. It comes with this manual, which after owning this for two months, you'll be able to recite in full with your eyes closed. It is completely useless, of course, because it does not show you how to deal with the mental trauma of owning a Land Rover. Another thing I've noticed about this it's just how much of a pig it is to turn round in a tight space. should have just gone the right way in the first place. So we've established that this Defender is completely useless as an everyday road car. But surely with these ridiculous mud tyres, it should be able to tackle a slope like this without breaking a sweat.
Oh, oh good to low. The Binder Defender is a bad idea. So what should you buy? Well, perhaps a Mitsubishi Shogun. It also has a 2.5 litre turbo diesel engine. But the similarities stop there, because this has air conditioning that you can actually switch off. And this can be picked up for a fraction of the price of a Defender. Or maybe even this 7.5 ton truck. It's far more comfortable and it's got bags of power. It's like driving a Ferrari in comparison. If you still insist on owning a Defender, you may as well come and buy this one. It's a bag of shit, but it's probably the best bag of shit you're going to find. So bring seven and a half grand cash, fill the logbook in, and drive it away. Just make sure you bring a towing strap for your journey home. One life, live it, on the back of a recovery truck. <laughs>